if you could, if we could make you dictator, would you abolish the Fed? Yes. You would? Yes, I mean, for, for, for the reasons I just gave, the history. So, but what would you replace it with? How would the currency, who, who would, how would the currency run? We, 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 we would replace it, we could replace it with what, what existed when it was created. Which was the gold, gold standard. Well, it, maybe the gold standard, but maybe not. But I, but there's no evidence that uh, these. What well, would you replace it? Things always bother me. You know, oh, I, they do? when someone removes the cancer, what do you replace it with? <laughs>
And then it started declining. And by June of 1930, it was down to 6.3 percent. That was when the first government intervention took place. And within six months, it was in double digits. And it stayed in double digits for the entire decade of the 1930s. So if we had had, I'm stumbling here because I'm making up this mental experiment as I go. If we had had Calvin Coolidge Oh, yes. Four terms in a row instead yes. of Franklin Roosevelt. And Calvin Coolidge, who was reticent in every way, including reticent to have the federal government do anything. Yes. He was a, he was a Warren Harding had certain moral failings, I mm -hmm. think. Calvin Coolidge was, was Warren Harding with personal rectitude. Yes. The country would have been better off? Absolutely. And more, more than that, I, I, Harding, after all, was eligible to run for office again. Remember, his famous thing was, I do not choose to run. Coolidge said, right. Yeah. Uh, Harding died and then Coolidge became president. Right, yes. right, right. And then he, then he won presidency in his own right, but he had only served one term in his own right. And they were expecting him to run again in 28, and he decided not to. Uh, if he stayed on, I'm sure he would, he would never have done what uh, Hoover did. Quote, for most of the history of this country, there was no Federal Reserve System. There you go, that dirty trick of bringing in history. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, there was no Federal Reserve System, which was established in 1914 to prevent bank failures. But bank failures in the 1930s exceeded anything ever seen before the Fed was established. Close quote. If you could, if we could make you dictator, would you abolish the Fed? Yes. You would? Yes. I mean, for, for, for the reasons I just gave, the history. There's no, uh, you know, the Fed represented wonderful hopes but, but we've had so many programs that represented wonderful hopes that ended in disaster. I, I don't doubt that someone who is sufficiently uh, scholarly could come up with examples of where the Federal Reserve made things better. But the question is, overall, what was it supposed to do? It was supposed to do not only prevent bank failures, it was supposed to prevent huge changes in the uh, money supply, in particular uh, great deflations. Right. The greatest deflation in American history occurred under the Federal Reserve System. You know, we, we, there was a crisis in 1907. Uh, J.P. Morgan, the original J.P. Morgan, uh, called the other banks into a room, uh, supposedly locked the doors, and said, we've got to do something or we're going to all collapse. And they did something and they didn't all collapse. But, but, the, but people, the progressives were, were shocked that one man could come in and take command of the situation, and especially someone who wasn't even in the government. Right. So... But t so what would you do? You'd move us back to the gold standard? Or you'd let no, no. banks issue their own currencies the way they did uh, uh, up through the Civil War, say? You, you could, I could, I could well, write... they weren't doing any of those things no. uh, as of the time the Federal Reserve was, was created. We were on the gold standard, though. But uh, it, it, whether we're on or off the gold standard, and there's a, that's another whole set of arguments. There's no evidence that I can see that over this vast period of time that the Federal Reserve has existed, that things on the whole have been better the great post-World War II uh, uh, inflation was fed by the, fe by the Federal Reserve doing exactly what they're planning to do now, namely buying up the bonds issued by the Treasury. Ah, oh, but don't you have, I have to say, I wasn't expecting your answer to, uh, to run in this direction, so I don't have questions, follow-up <laughs> questions prepared, or you may actually have, I may actually have to think here in real time. But don't we have the example of that period from 83 through uh, the, a couple of years ago, that 25 years of economic expansion, we had only two downturns. They were both very shallow and very brief. And what you had was Paul Volcker, whom Carter appointed, but Reagan gave the freedom actually to wring inflation out of the currency. He did that by the mid-80s. The economy takes off. Alan Greenspan does a reasonably good job. And then at the end, there's too much money in the, but maybe five years of getting it wrong. So you what got, Volcker did was undo the harm that previous Federal Reserves had done. <laughs> including Arthur Burns. Yeah, unfortunately, who was my right. teacher and one of my much admired. Right, right. So, but what would you replace it with? How would the currency, who, who would, how would the currency run? We, 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 we would replace it, we could replace it with what, what existed when it was created. Which was the gold, gold standard. Well, it may be the gold standard, but maybe not. But, I, but there's no evidence that uh, these, what would you replace it things always bother me. You know, oh, I, they do? When someone removes the cancer, what do you replace it with? 